I'm Ted Crosby. I'm the Integrated Farming Systems Technical Lead for Monsanto. It's a pleasure to talk to you today about a new way of thinking about farming. Um, I farm, as um, I'm sure all of you do, and I've asked myself many times, why do we do it this way? And the, the answer usually is there are very practical reasons why we, for example, plant one hybrid at a single seeding rate with a single fertility rate. The practical reason we do that is because that's the most efficient way to farm a lot of acres. The more uniform you can make the farming practices, the more you can standardize it, the more you can drive costs down, and the more acres you can do it. But that's not really the way to maximize yield, decrease risk, and improve the sustainability of the farming system. So we've been working on a new way to think about that. The most important thing you need to know is this is a disruptive technology. It's going to irritate every conventional belief that you have. Um, it's not going to feel quite right. It's kind of like a new pair of shoes. You know, they should be better than the old ones, but they don't feel quite right until they get worn in a little bit. So we're working on three main platforms to change the way in which we farm. First is variable rate seeding, second is variable rate fertility, the third is multiple genetics or two or three ver hybrids or varieties per field. Why are we doing that? If you think about the way soil was made and you look at a standard university soil map, they are not in alignment. The glaciers basically smeared the surface. They didn't draw all of those nice, sharp demarcations between soil types. If you farm based on those nice, sharp demarcations, you're missing um, the management of the transition zones, which is one of the keys to this. The other thing is that farming any field for the last, say, 75 years has changed the distribution of soil on that farm. We've lost about half of the topsoil in the United States. It's either moved within the field from the top of the hill to the bottom of the hill or it's moved off of the farm which is the, why the, which is the reason why all the rivers in the United States are muddy. All of this twelve to fifteen thousand dollar farmland is floating down the Mississippi causing all the hypoxia. So it starts with learning how to map the true yield potential in a field. Soil maps are basically taxonomic classifications. They, they describe the physical and chemical characteristics, but they don't tell you the true yield potential of the field. So the first thing we did was relearn how to map a field from a yield potential point of view. If you're using a standard yield map or a standard Sergo soil map and you write a variable rate seeding prescription to it, you're basically writing to random variation. Because as all farmers know, if you look at a yield monitor, there's as much variation within a soil type for yield as there is across soil types. So basically the soil types are very misleading when it comes to writing prescriptions. Normalized yield maps you might think would be better and they are slightly better but the repeatability because of the interactions across years if you actually look at spatial yield and the repeatability across years um, the correlation is only about 0.4 it explains about this year's map explains about 16 percent of next year's spatial yield variability there is a better way to make that map, and that's what we've invented. So when you have the right map, then variable rate seeding starts to make sense. And so um, we actually write prescriptions for variable rate seeding based on a different mapping technology. A typical farm in the Midwest, in Iowa, Illinois, the plant density ranges might range from 28 to 48,000 plants per acre. Um, and if you're going to do that, then you have to have the germplasm that actually responds to those um, seeding rates. For the last 12 years, we've had um, a global integrated breeding program 
um, where we brought germplasm from all over the world through this mixing pot with molecular markers and our germplasm actually is very responsive to plant density or it's kind of the asymptotic response or it's just a steady eddy. The key is to know which, which response you have by hybrid, by yield management zone map. So it's the interaction that matters. With our germplasm, variable rate seeding works with our yield management zone mapping. Then it's only logical that fertility needs to be aligned with the yield potential. And so we're working on that. And we're seeing at least a 10 bushel lift for variable rate seeding another 10 bushel lift for varying nitrogen fertilizer with the yield management zone map. Actually it can be a lot higher than that because we're over fertilizing the poorer parts of the field and under fertilizing the better parts of the field. And then if you have a germplasm that's responsive to these different yield management zones then it only makes sense to plant more than one hybrid in a field. But to do that, we need a different kind of corn planter. So our precision planting engineering team has actually invented a retrofit product to plant at will one hybrid versus another hybrid. It's not one row unit versus another one. It's two different hybrids through exactly the same row unit. And it can paint a field like an inkjet printer with different hybrids. Um, changing hybrids every 10 meters or every 33 feet if needed. Now we don't need to change hybrids that often but you can think about how you could actually put two or three hybrids in a field and again maximize yield. So integrated farming systems is an integrated approach to the whole system to improve yield, decrease risk, and improve sustainability of the system and the latter is actually the most important. We can't lose any more topsoil and expect to continue to increase yield. Fertilizer prices are going to go up. Regulatory agencies are taking a hard look at fertilizer use because people want clean water and farmers want clean water and farmers especially don't want to see their expensive farmland washed down the river so the sustainability of this new system is probably the most important reason to do it. We'd love to talk to all of you about it. Check out our websites and come talk to us. This video is brought to you by Farms.com.